ஒரு திரைப்பட தயாரிப்பு அப்படின்றது எப்படி இருக்கணும்னு நினைக்கிறீங்க That's a tricky question. ப்ரொடியூசராக நம்மளுக்கு எப்போவுமே ஒரு நல்ல ப்ராடக்டும் வேணும் தான் ஐ மீன் தட்ஸ் ஆர் விஷ் ஸோ யூ ஹாவ் அ காம்பினேஷன் ஆஃப் தேட் பட் ஆஸ் அ ப்ரொடியூசர் ப்ரைமர்லி யூ வாண்ட் டு பி சேஃப் ஒரு திரைப்பட தயாரிப்பில் தயாரிப்பாளருடைய பங்களிப்பு இருக்குல்ல அது எந்தெந்த விஷயத்தில் முக்கியமாக அமையணும்னு நினைக்கிறீங்க நீங்கள் ஐ டோன்ட் சிட் இன் மை ஆஃபீஸ் அண்ட் ரன் அ ப்ரொடக்ஷன் ஐ அண்ட் பேர் அவுட் தேர் ஆன் லொக்கேஷன் எவ்ரி டே ஒரு படம் வெற்றி பெற நடிகர்கள் மிக முக்கியம்னு நினைக்கிறீங்களா கண்டென்ட் ரொம்ப முக்கியம்னு நினைக்கிறீங்களா இந்த திரைப்படத்தை தயாரித்த தயாரிப்பாளர் ஜார்ஜ் ஃபயஸ் தரையில் அவர்கள் நம்மோடு இணைந்து இருக்கிறார் ஈச் மூமெண்ட் இன் டே ஹாஸ் அ வேல்யூ டு சே தட் வி ஆர் டிலைட்டட் டு வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் டு அனதர் அஸ்டாண்டிங் செஷன் வித் பி அன் அண்டர் ஸ்டேட்மெண்ட் டுடே வி ஹாவ் வித் அஸ் த மோஸ்ட் எஸ்டீம் ப்ரொடியூசர் மிஸ் அ ஜார்ஜ் ஃபயஸ் தரையில் kick started his career as an executive and line producer he reached himalayan heights through constant efforts and hard work he has worked predominantly in tamil hindi and malayalam industry to know more about him avichi college of arts and science is proud to present an av george payas tarayil tin kerala vil pirandar தனது பட்டப்படிப்பை முடித்துவிட்டு தனது தந்தை தொடங்கிய பைமர் குரூப் ஆஃப் கம்பெனியில் இளம் வயதில் பணியை தொடங்கினார் இரண்டாயிரத்தி இரண்டாம் ஆண்டு டெலிபோட்டோ என்டர்டைன்மெண்ட் லிமிடெட்டில் சிஓவாக பணியாற்றினார் அந்த நிறுவனத்தால் தயாரிக்கப்பட்ட ஃபிர்ம் இலங்கே மலமால் வீக்லி அண்ட் சுக் சுக் கே போன்ற திரைப்படங்களில் பணியாற்றினார் அதன் பின் மிட் அண்ட் மை ஃப்ரெண்ட் என்ற ஆங்கில திரைப்படத்திற்கு எக்ஸிகூட்டிவ் ப்ரொடியூசராக பணியாற்றி மூன்று தேசிய விருதுகளை அள்ளி வந்த வெற்றி நாயகன் அதன் பின் தனது நண்பன் மிஸ்டர் சுரேஷ் பாலாஜியுடன் இணைந்து சினிமா பற்றிய தனது தொலைநோக்கு பார்வையால் ஒயிட் ஆங்கிள் கிரியேஷன் என்ற தயாரிப்பு நிறுவனத்தை தொடங்கினார் பணம் வைத்திருப்பவர்கள் எல்லாம் தயாரிப்பாளர் அல்ல நல்ல படைப்புகளை தருபவர் தான் தயாரிப்பாளர் அந்த வகையில் இந்திய சினிமாவுக்கு கிடைத்த கிரீடம் தான் ஜார்ஜ் பயஸ் தரையில் என்ற வெற்றி தயாரிப்பாளர் உலக நாயகனின் தூங்காவனம் பாபநாசம் தொடங்கி புதுமுகங்களை வைத்து மதுரை சம்பவம் என இவர் செய்த சம்பவங்கள் பல கேரளா சூப்பர் ஸ்டார் மோகன்லாலுடன் மரக்கார் திரைப்படத்தில் இணைந்த இவர் அத்திரைப்படத்திற்கு மூன்று தேசிய விருதுகளை பெற்றார் மெய் கேர்ஃபுல் திருஷியம் பில்லா டூ யாவரம் நலம் என இவர் தயாரித்த வெற்றி படங்களே இவர் பிலிமோகிராபிக்கு பலம் தேர்ட்டின் பி மலமால் வீக்லி த பாடி என பல ஹிந்தி படங்களையும் தயாரித்து வெற்றி கண்டவர் தமிழ் மலையாளம் ஹிந்தி ஆங்கிலம் பிரெஞ்ச் என ஒயிட் ஆங்கிள் கதைகளை அணுகி நல்ல சினிமாவை மக்களுக்கு அளிக்கும் இந்த தயாரிப்பு நாயகனை கௌரவிப்பதில் பெருமிதம் கொள்கிறது ஆவிச்சி கலை மற்றும் அறிவியல் கல்லூரி அணுகவேண்டியது <laughs> திருஷ்யம் ஸ்ரீபிரியாவோட ஹஸ்பண்ட் ராஜ்குமார்னு இருக்கார் அவர் வந்து படத்தை வந்து பல மொழிகள் எடுத்தார் திருஷ்யம் என்ற படத்தை அது அதோடய வேரியஸ் லாங்குவேஜஸ் வாங்கி எடுத்தார் பா சீஸ் அது பார்ட் ஒன்று எடுத்தார் பார்ட் டூ எடுத்தார் தெலுங்கில் எடுத்தார் மலையா கன்னடத்தில் எடுத்தார் மலையாளத்தில் இது தமிழில் எடுத்தார் எல்லா பாஷ் அது எல்லாமே வந்து இவங்க தான் பண்ணி கொடுத்தாங்க ஒவ்வொரு இதுவும் பிளான் பண்ணி கம்ப்ளீட்டாக ஃபுல் அவுட்டோர் யூனிட் வச்சுருக்காங்க கம்ப்ளீட் போஸ்ட் ப்ரொடக்ஷன் வச்சுருக்காங்க உங்களுக்கு தேர் கால் லைன் ப்ரொடியூசர்ஸ் தே வில் ஃபினிஷ் த ப்ராடக்ட் அண்ட் கிவ் இட் டு யூ இன்றைக்கி ஐ திங்க் தேர் த ஃபோர் ரன்னர்ஸ் இது வரைக்கும் யார் அந்த மாதிரி பண்ணது கிடையாது இவரோட பார்ட்னர் மிஸ்டர் சுரேஷ் பாலாஜி அவர் கொஞ்சம் ஷை அதனால் வரல 
டைரக்டர் இது ப்ரொடியூசர் கே பாலாஜி அவங்களோட சன்னு நான் எப்படி சொல்லணும்னா நான் காலேஜை விட்டு உங்கள் வயசில் நான் வெளியில் வர போகும்போது எனக்கு ஒரு சந்தேகம் சினிமாக்குள்ளே வரலாமா வேணாமா வரலாமா வேணாமான்னு அப்போ அவர் பாலாஜி அங்கிள் நான் கூப்பிடுவேன் நீங்கள் எல்லாம் பார்த்துருப்பீங்க பல சினிமாவில் ஆக்ட் பண்ணியிருப்பார் சுஜாதா சினி ஆர்ட்ஸ்ன்ற கம்பெனியில் படம் எடுத்தார் ஒன் ஆஃப் த பிக்கஸ்ட் ப்ரொடியூசர்ஸ் ரஜினிகாந்தை வச்சு பல படம் எடுத்தார் பில் அவர் தான் எடுத்தார் ஒரிஜினல் பில் அவர் தான் எடுத்தார் பல வெற்றி படங்கள் எடுத்தார் அவரோட மகன் சுரேஷ் பாலாஜி ஸோ சுரேஷ் வந்து பிறந்தது வளர்ந்த எல்லாருமே சினிமாவில் தான் பிறந்து வளர்ந்தார் இவரோட பார்ட்னர் அவர் கொஞ்சம் ஷை அதனால் வரல பட் ஆஸ் 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 கம்பெனி தி ஆர் டூயிங் எக்ஸ்ட்ரீம்லி வெல் ஐ வாண்டட் தெம் டு ஷேர் வாட் இஸ் ஃபிலிம் மேக்கிங் டு யூ ஏன்னா வந்து இப்போ எடிட்டிங் பார்த்தீங்க கேமரா பார்த்தீங்க ஒரு தயாரிப்பு என்னென்னு நீங்கள் பார்க்கணும் அதில் எப்படி கணக்கு வழக்கு பார்த்து அதை எப்படி பட்ஜெட்டிங் பண்ணுறது நிறைய விஷயங்கள் இருக்குது எது கேட்கணுமோ தயாரிப்பை பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் அவங்கள்ட்ட நீங்கள் கேட்கலாம் தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் மார்னிங் எவ்ரி ஒன் தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் இன்வைட்டிங் மீ ஹியர் டுடே ஷண்முகம் இஸ் அ குட் ஃப்ரெண்ட் அண்ட் ஐ இஸ் ஹாப்பி தட் ஐ குட் கம் ஹியர் டு ஷேர் அ லிட்டில் பேட் அபவுட் the film making process itself and uh, thank you for that uh, generous in- introduction i think uh, it was more than what i deserve but uh, all the same i'll take it thanks so uh, i'm going to quickly run you through the film making process but with a particular focus on uh, production so just to look at uh, film making it's a, it's a process of making a film from an initial story idea and or commission it through script writing shooting editing and finally distributing it to an audience uh, the thing about film making is it involves a lot of people it can take from few months to several years depending on the size of the project and uh, it uses uh, an amazing amount of technologies and techniques uh, which is uh, you know constantly evolving and of course um, as you're all aware uh, it involves a lot of subjects Uh, depending on the genre that uh, one chooses to make a film in so what are the stages you look first of all uh, you develop uh, something that you want to make so it's a development and once it's fully developed you go into a pre production process um, and uh, then it's the production post production and then sales and distribution so uh, what i'm going to focus on is i'll probably quickly run through the development uh, Uh, process without taking too much of your time and i'll focus more on the pre production and production aspects i think most of the post production i'm sure some some of the other dignitaries who have been here probably have spoken to you so i'll just uh, probably run through that too so what is development development is first of all you need to find a story a story can be an original story or a borrowed one uh so uh, borrowed in the sense of it can be a book right or it can be somebody else's story that uh, you know has come to you and you're developing it or it is some a director who's writing his own story and bringing it for development so once you develop a story into a full script you get into screenplay writing and then you go through the process of preparing a rough budget um you have a wish list of cast and crew but you still haven't finalized anybody and then uh, an important thing nowadays is you end up pitching your proposal to a funder so uh, in in today's scenario you have uh, uh, you know you don't have independent producers always making the films there's a studio model that's uh, evolved and um, even uh, you know taking on a greater prominence so you generally like to uh, get a funder for your project and then usually when you have a rough budget you want to assess your business potential before you finally approve uh, or get an approval from a funder to move ahead on the uh, on the project itself yeah so finding a story uh, a producer identifies a suitable story idea and it can be from a book a play a film or a remake or a film from another language based on a true incident or an original idea i'm sure there are many many more categories we can add to that and then the producer works with a writer or director and prepares a synopsis for a chosen story so that's the first thing that you do and then uh, the next slide please then the entire story is broken down into scenes uh, concentrating on the dramatic structure and each scene is usually explained in a single paragraph and then a treatment note is prepared explaining the scenes its mood its characters and um, in 
sometimes, not very often, but you also add some dialogues into, into it at this stage, but then the dialogue writing is an entirely uh, separate process also most of the time. So uh, in some cases, to get a better understanding of the film, depending on its genre, some people also prepare a storyboard to help with the process. So the uh, once uh, in, the, in the process of development of a screenplay, um, once you have the full script written, we need to get into the screenplay writing. So the producer will hire a, a screenplay writer or a screenwriter, and uh, they start uh, the work on uh, fully developing the screenplay as uh, you know you would like to see it on the screen. So this is a long and cumbersome process, and it can take several months, and. Uh, it can also uh, undergo various versions, uh, rewritten many times, and uh, uh, you know, uh, till till uh, I think the director and the producer and the screenwriter are fully convinced that okay, it's it's a screenplay worth uh, you know putting putting out there and putting it into production. So uh, in in some cases, like uh, people come to us also with a fully written screenplay, and in in those cases, of course. As a producer, I would save a lot of time because uh, you know I can assess the screenplay and then decide whether we want to move ahead with the project or not. So you get into an evaluation process. Um, so uh, typically when you want to do a film, uh, a writer or a director will have so an idea of what are the kind of stars he's looking for or what is the kind of casting he wants to do. He'll also probably have a, a wish list of the crew, the technicians he wants along with him on the project. So then you prepare a wish list of cast and crew, and uh, you know you look at the various uh, combinations that will work on a project. Because depending on uh, on the kind of uh, uh, stars that you go for, uh, because ours is uh, predominantly even now uh, uh, a star-driven industry more than. Uh, content-driven uh, driven industry. It's slowly changing though. Um, so, you know, you need to do your math to see what is the combination of uh, crew and uh, cast that you can afford on a film. So, and based on that, you get a, a very rough budget, which is a tentative budget at this stage, because this budget that you have now is very indicative, and uh, it can change uh, based on, uh, on the processes that will follow soon after the evaluation process is done and, uh, and, uh, and the project is basically greenlit. Because once you go for recce and, uh, you know, uh, things like that, uh, a lot of things can change. Um, so the proposal is discussed with potential distributors or buyers sometimes to know if I do a combination of a certain star with a certain director, uh, what is the likelihood of business based on, um, on the market that I can um, get out of a film like this or a genre like this and obviously you don't want to go into risk as far as possible so uh, you will try to see if you can work on a budget that kind of fits that uh, uh, you know assessment that people are giving you. So um, this step that I just spoke to you about in many cases is not necessary because sometimes the stars and technicians will uh, kind of ensure that you get uh, a minimum on-table business. If you're working with a big stars or a, a really big producer, or I mean, I'm sorry, a director, then uh, you know very often you know that uh, okay, uh, on table I can do a minimum business of so much. So the evaluation process itself gets very easy. Um, then uh, and once a proposal is ready, the producer will pitch it to a prospective funder. So in, in many cases in our industry, the producer himself may borrow money uh, at a cost uh, uh, to fund the project, or uh, nowadays we go to a studio and find out if they are willing to pitch in along with us, or, uh, or sometimes you find a co-producer who can fund the project for you and mitigate some of the risk uh, for you. So that's how you. So once the, uh, the proposal is uh, pitched and uh, you have potential financers, um, who study the project and make their own assessment, obviously, be before they put in money. Uh, uh, I mean, and some of the things that they do consider are the genre, what is your target audience, what is the historical success of films of a similar genre that we are talking about, and uh, uh, what is the potential of the director or the crew that is backing a project 
Is it a new director? Is it an established director? These are some of the things that weigh in on, on how much money somebody will put in or if somebody will put in any money at all. Uh, so uh, some, sometimes, yeah, some of the financiers also do ask you for a change of uh, cast or, um, uh, you know, the options that you're looking at because they feel there is a better potential with an actor vis-a-vis uh, -vis somebody that you might have already chosen but not yet locked. So, um, so looking at uh, revenue streams, uh, this was potentially the, the kind of uh, revenue we were looking at, I think, uh, pre-COVID, um, where uh, almost 70 to 72 percent was uh, uh, theatrical business and uh, domestic theatrical, and then you had cable and satellite and television, international theatrical, and then you had other rights like music, home video, etc. Uh, but uh, next slide, please. But today, uh, it's, it's very fluid, it's changing. Today, theatrical is, uh, again, it depends on the kind of project and the size of the project and, uh, you know, who's involved in the project. The smaller projects, you might still find uh, the, you might find the theatrical even less than the 40% that's shown here. It might be even just 20% and 80% may be OTT and, uh, you know, cable and satellite uh, and other rights. So it's, it's pretty fluid, but broadly for a, uh, you know, for a fairly large project, I think today you'd look at uh, about 40% only as domestic theatrical and the rest 60 would probably go into the other uh, the avenues of, uh, you know, uh, monetizing the project. So, um, based on all, all these kind of assessments, the financier will finally give a go-ahead for the project and uh, if, or a studio or whatever, who is backing you. And at this stage, uh, you know, your project is, uh, is actually uh, greenlit uh, and then uh, we are ready to move into the next slide. Can I have the next slide, please? Move into the the next stage, which is the pre-production stage. So I'm going to, uh, I mean, this is uh, just a quick run through of the development process uh, that mostly happens nowadays. Um, but let's go into pre-production. So in pre-production, typically, what do we do? So uh, one is now you have a greenlit project. You have an idea, more or less, of who you want to cast and who are the technicians you want on board. So you finalize the crew, do the scheduling. I'll, I'll get into all of these. Uh, prepare a detailed budget, finalize locations, costumes, the look of the actors who are part of the part of your project. Then, of course, on the production side, we do travel and accommodation arrangements, equipments. We need to finalize uh, the next slide. Then, composing of music and uh, uh, you know, recording of songs. These these are sometimes or uh, most often part of uh, pre-production process. But sometimes it does overlap with the production process also, depending on who you have as a music director uh, and things like that. And then um, in the olden days, we used to purchase film, but now it's mostly uh, hard disk because we're all, we've gone digital nowadays. Uh, yeah, the next slide. So finally, uh, cast and crew, we get to finalize. So normally after the go-ahead is given, the director and, uh, and the pr producer begin the process of finalizing the principal cast and crew of the film. And then we also get into finalizing the DOP, the art director, production designer, editor, music director, costumer, and, and you know, all the other heads and uh, that typically will form the core team of the, of the film. Um, the lead actors, male and female, and the supporting cast also are kind of finalized at this stage. And uh, this, uh, the next slide, the, this process uh, involves negotiation, obviously, with uh, both the cast and the crew. Um, and it's not negotiating just money, it's also their time. So, because many of them are busy, so you need to find out what, does, what is the time schedule they can allot for your project, and does it suit the kind of uh, dates that you are looking at, or do you need to move on? So this is a process that might go back and forth till uh, you know you finally lock in on the actors and the uh, uh, principal crew that you want to work on a film with. And it's at this stage that we uh, draw up the contracts and actually pay advances. Before I go into the next slide, um, the, uh, in you know earlier days, um, this uh, process of signing contracts was not uh, 
uh, you know, taken that seriously. But today, especially with the studios coming in and the studio models uh, gaining prominence, um, this, this process of actually uh, signing very detailed contracts is uh, very much on in our industry and it's something that's for the better of this industry. So uh, the next step is uh, scheduling. Uh, you now have a kind of a fully written screenplay and everything available with you. So what, what does the team, the core team that you have put together now, the director and his assistants and the DOP and all that sit together and they prepare a schedule based on the script. And uh, then you kind of zero in, not really zero in, but make a wish list of the kind of locations that you would like for the film and uh, that is listed out. And uh, at this stage, the director also will get an idea of uh, approximately how long he's going to need to actually can this film. So the number of shooting days, etc. though tentative at this stage, broadly you'll know, okay, I can finish this film in 45 days or 60 days or 100 days or whatever that is kind of determined. And uh, so this is, at this stage, it's pretty loose. Uh, but you have a general idea and then there can be some variations once you actually go and see the location and uh, decide on what you want to do. So um, it is at this stage that we as uh, you know when we are looking into the numbers of the film we are able to actually get in and prepare a, a more detailed budget. So the first budget we spoke about earlier is a very uh, loose budget. Broadly, you have an idea of the kind of heads and what you would like to spend on those heads. But now you have, uh, you know, you're able to, since you've locked the principal crew, you've locked the actors, those become fixed costs. So you have now have an idea of your fixed costs on the film. So you can now begin to focus on the variable costs on a film, which is actually a very um, a crucial part of filmmaking because the variables in a film are often more than the fixed costs that uh, we deal with. So uh, then you get into based on um, you will have an idea of the kind of equipment he wants, the cameras that you want to use, the kind of lights he's looking at and then the art director will let you know do I need sets or can we shoot this on live locations, things like that. So you're able to work a more detailed budget. And uh, once you have that kind of uh, a working, you're also able to plan your cash flow. Depending on how long, um, you know, the process is going to take from pre-production to final delivery of the film, uh, you'll need to work your cash flow so that your funder also will have an idea of uh, how they need to plan disbursement of funds to you. Uh, this budget that we prepared at this stage is still uh, you know, liable for a certain amount of change, but not that major. Yeah. So what are your main heads of expenses? Generally, it's the artists, technicians, your pre-production costs, which are your recce costs, writing costs, uh, you know, your office and administrative expenses, food, uh, you know, during pre-production, travel, all that is one head. And then equip equipment cost for the film. Uh, then Lab and raw stock was there, but nowadays it's, you know, you're mostly buying hard disks, so, um, you know, uh, that's an easier process than um, the old process that was there. Then, of course, your daily shooting expenses, um, which can vary, again, depending on the kind of locations that we are uh, shooting in. Are you shooting in the city? Are you outdoor? Are you actors from the city? Or do you have to bring them, accommodate them? So your shooting expenses can vary depending on uh, on the kind of uh, heads that we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Travel and accommodation is something that again forms a crucial head in, in the filmmaking process, especially if you're going outdoor to shoot. Um, then the music budget, the, the post-production sound and other things, then the location costs, then the cost of uh, set and property. So the art director by now will have a, a good idea of, uh, you know, what, what it's going to cost. So that's another head that will form it. Then, of course, the editing cost, cost of, uh, depending on the kind of film that you're doing, cost of costumes, makeup, is it a period film, is it, you know, uh, all that's going to weigh in on those costs. And then your graphics, special effects, DI, 
Um, and today that's uh, again um, gaining more prominence. And then the final DI process and final output costs uh, are, are the major heads that we look at. So the director, cinematographer, art director and the production team then will start the scouting process to find suitable locations based on the script of the film. And once the director has uh, uh, selected or zeroed in on the locations, we take over at that stage again the production pro team has to take over to negotiate the, the location that uh, the director requires. We need to talk the rates, the timeline and uh, you know finalize the locations. And if there is a, a problem with the location, of course, we will ask the director to give us alternatives. But yeah, that process takes over. And the art director, like I told you earlier, will uh, also uh, be able to assess the kind of work he has to put into each location. So he will be able to uh, give us a guidance on, uh, uh, on the kind of numbers that he will uh, need in terms of the art budget. Finalizing costumes. So the director then sits with the costume designer and plans the costumes for each character of the film and for each scene of the film. It's again a very, you know, cumbersome process and uh, a, a very detailed process, again, depending on the kind of film you're doing, especially if you're doing period films or films that, um, you know, are out of the uh, ordinary, then that much more work. And uh, so this process is on. And uh, sometimes the costumes are ready-made, bought. Sometimes they are uh, to be made, depending on the kind of the film that we are looking at. And of course, uh, we do trials with the ar uh, artists, and the director has uh, uh, will probably require changes, and we go through that process also. And then again, we have the hairdresser, the makeup team, all of them again working with the director and the uh, actors because the look of each character in the film it has to be uh, determined. So based on that, the, the uh, makeup and hair department will, will uh, buy the necessary things like wigs or uh, special makeup or prosthetics or whatever is involved in uh, giving the character the look that the film needs. Um, yeah, the next slide. Uh, travel and accommodation. Yeah, so this is another uh, thing that uh, primarily uh, falls on us as, uh, you know, the producers or the line producers or executive producers. So based on, on the rough schedule that the director has given you or the schedule that you have in hand, you need to assess the kind of um, uh, travel plans and the accommodation plans that we need to put in place. So accommodation, we have various categories, again, depending on the um, a, B or C category hotels that we have to finalize. Then we have to uh, also plan uh, the transportation. Uh, so the number of vehicles that we need to use. Um, are we going outdoor? Then we need to book tickets for all those who are traveling. Again, the mode of uh, travel, whether it's by flight or train or, uh, or by road, all this has to be assessed and uh, suitable uh, arrangements booking of tickets, booking of hotels, etc. have to be uh, done by the production. So another important thing in, uh, in any film uh, making process is uh, food. Um, end of the day, uh, the entire team uh, that's working on the film, uh, they need to be fed well. Uh, and uh, I've, I've noticed that food uh, is uh, something that, uh, you know, plays a very crucial role in in keeping up the morale of, uh, of the unit, especially when you go outdoor and have long schedules. So it's important that you make proper and good food arrangements for your cast and crew. Uh, now, along with the DOP, you need to actually get into finalizing equipments, um, the kind of camera, the number of cameras, again, depending on the kind of film that you're doing, uh, what is the lighting equipment that he needs. The lighting equipment can vary from location to location. He might give you a separate list for the outdoor and a separate list, uh, list if he's doing it in a studio or in an indoor location. So um, based on the scheduling that has been done, it's up to us as uh, you know producers to ensure that the required equipment is there on set uh, on the required day. 
So generally in this process we also uh, will request the director or the DOP uh, their assistance to give us a very detailed list of any special equipments needed for particular scenes in particular locations so that uh, it's not a last minute thing because some of these special equipments you may not get at short notice so we need to book them in advance. So the other things are the grape, the generator, then the sound recording um, equipment, then special equipments like jibs, uh, drones, steady cams, and and stuff like that. All that need to be organized. Then um, composing of music. So again, depending on the kind of film that you're doing, I think music has been uh, an important part of uh, our uh, film industry. And uh, so the music director and the director need to sit together to uh, to decide on the number of uh, the kind of songs they want the number of songs in the film and uh, even timelines between uh, uh, when the director is planning the shoot of a song to when the music director can actually deliver the the song uh, uh, for the shoot so uh, then the the music director will come back to him with various options of tunes um, which they again sit together and they okay. Lyric writer is another important person. He comes in at uh, sometimes right in the beginning, sometimes it's after the tune is made, uh, the lyrics are written or sometimes the tune is made to a uh, written uh, lyric. So uh, once the director in principle is okayed it, then the music director goes ahead with the development of the song and prepares for the recording of the songs. The recording of songs, once the, direct, the song is finalized, uh, the music director and the director choose the singers for the various songs. And the production team will finalize the uh, terms with the singers. We need to do contracts with singers nowadays. The contract uh, with the music director would already have been done in the initial stage. But with the singers too, now with all the audio companies coming up with uh, their requirements, the uh, the process of signing this contract with the singers also is very crucial and important. And of course, you talk money to them uh, and what you're going to pay them for each song and things like that. So, uh, the music director, generally now the music director will then take care of uh, the entire recording process. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you just get into a package deal with, uh, with them, it makes the process easier. Whereas in the olden days, it was, I think, the producers used to actually go into getting uh, and paying each of the uh, various elements that come into making uh, the recording separately. But today, it's, it's mostly a package deal with the music director. So once you have a song uh, uh, ready, it is obviously passed on to the direction department for them to uh, use it for the uh, song shoot. Uh, there is an element of coordination uh, needed here between the direction department and the music director's office so that you will get the music in time for you to shoot the song. It may not be the final mix song but by and large you will get it so that you can um, shoot the song as per the plan that you have made. So uh, purchase of stock, this was uh, primarily so a very important process in the olden days where the cameraman used to actually give the kind of stock that he needed um, and it had to be uh, sourced by the producer. But nowadays we are in the digital era and so it's mostly purchase of hard disks and you need to decide, uh, um, you know, what is the kind of uh, backups and storage uh, facilities that you are looking for the film and based on that we simply buy the hard disks that are required. And uh, then the DOP also gives you a list of consumables, the, uh, you know, filters and uh, the, you know, things that go into, into the film uh, canning process that he needs, uh, like the skimmers, the black cloth, dulling sprays and, and, and a lot of other things that have, uh, you know, used during the filming process itself. And this has to be procured again by the producer. So the Production team. Now, on, on our side also, other than ensuring that the various departments need what they are looking at, we need to prepare ourselves also for the shoot. Uh, so, we get into the process of ensuring that we have the proper accounting vouchers, the reporting formats 
and uh, the expense vouchers, camera report formats and uh, call sheet formats and stuff like that. And then uh, uh, the olden days the videotapes were purchased but that's, that's totally out now. We go in for hard disks and pen drives which are required for uh, the uh, the crew during shoot direction department will need the costumer will need one to maintain continuity um, so you know all those are also bought for the various departments and then we do a basic check and a review whether everything is in place before we actually move into the production process so now we are actually uh, talking about the uh, the shoot itself so the arrival of cast and crew on sets so Obviously, before this, we've moved everybody. If you're going outdoor, you know, you made sure everybody is settled in into the, the location that you are going to film at. And then um, in, in the, uh, it's the arrival of cast and crew on sets on the, on the first day of shoot and uh, preparing of equipments by the crew, uh, preparing the cast, their uh, makeup, hair, costume, shooting process begins, end of day shoot, review of the day's work and uh, report on the, uh, the camera report it's basically earlier we used to have a report on the film the, uh, that was actually consumed but today it's on what is exposed and uh, the DIT will send in a report on on the movement of uh, of the backups and, and everything that is there and then of course the next day's call sheets have to be put out and, and uh, uh, shared with all the departments so that they can also uh, be prepared for the next day's shoot. Next slide, please. Normally, in the shooting process, the work of the art and the costume departments continue even after a day's shoot uh, because they are very crucial to preparing the next day's shoot. It's the art department which has to ensure that, you know, when the uh, director and the other crew and uh, all come to the set in the morning, uh, the requirements that are uh, required to can that scene is ready. So very often you'll find the art department and all working almost through the night or late into the night to prepare for the next day's shoot. The costume department again, if it is uh, the continuity, generally we might have a set uh, multiple sets of the same costume, but in some cases if you're doing action scenes and, and stuff like that, um, you know they may need to. Um, you know, do some repair to a costume or, uh, you know, get the costumes washed and ready for next day's shoot and stuff like that. So it's a process that is, so uh, typically in filmmaking your work doesn't end when the, when the director says the shoot is over for the day. I think for most departments after that also there's work including the, um, the direction and the DOP's department. So on the production side, we have to plan the next day's transportation. Um, and uh, pick up time, call time for all the actors. So it, it falls on us to make sure that people are there on, on the set on time. So uh, it's very important to have a good transportation manager who will, who will manage the, you know, ensure that vehicles reach the hotel. It's where va various people are staying in time or if it's picking up people from their houses, you know, it gets there on time. You calculate the, uh, the travel time. Um, and ensure that, uh, you know, uh, people reach the set on time. So, um, basically, if, I, if you know, in, in my experience, whenever I've shot abroad, in the call sheets, they even include the travel time uh, for uh, a person from his uh, pickup place to the set. So, on, on the call sheet, it's mentioned so that you know you need to leave uh, sufficiently in time. Uh, so this, this process will continue till uh, every day till the entire film is scanned. And in the olden days, the, uh, when we were shooting on film, the exposed negative was sent to the lab for developing and you know, preparing rush prints. But today, everything is stored in hard disk. And so this process is not required. So you uh, typically have a DIT on set to check the footage. Um, you know, we have the luxury of doing that now. So he will sit on the set, he will check, uh, download and check whether there are any glitches, whether anything needs to be reshot or, the, or there's any problem with the footage. So all that is done on the set while we are shooting and uh, if the footage is fine then he transfers it to uh, backup hard disk and also 
uh, will prepare a, uh, a lower resolution one which is what is used typically in post production. So once the entire film is scanned, the director calls for a, a wrap and uh, that's when you know the entire uh, film is, uh, is shot and finished. So uh, once that is done, the cast and the principal crew will obviously leave location and go to the various places they come from. But for us uh, in the production department, there's still a lot of work. We need to settle bills, we need to ensure that people are dropped off to the airport or station, picked up when they arrive the next day. Uh, so all that coordination work has to go on. Then we need to, uh, you know, dismantle sets and stuff like that if that is there. And, uh, uh, you know, all th those kind of things happen. So um, in the next slide. So uh, I'm just quickly going to run through these because I've mostly spoken. So what once occur in, in, the, in production, the film is actually shot and created. So a typical day begins with the arrival of uh, crew on sets and uh, or the location as per their call time. And the actors are generally given a, a later call time uh, than the principal crew because they need to come in and uh, set up the light men and the art department people and others come in much earlier and the actors have the luxury of coming in a little later. Uh, so once the crew arrive, uh, the next slide, uh, once the crew arrive in the morning, um, they begin preparations for the day shoot, the lighting and, and uh, you know, dressing up the set by the art department, uh, getting the camera and the sound equipment ready, all this is done uh, so that when uh, finally the actors are ready, we can start the shoot without uh, wasting too much time. So the crew will prepare, uh, while all this is being done, the actors would have come and then they begin their process of getting into their costumes, getting their makeup done and all that. So that by the time the lighting process is ready and the set is actually ready for shoot, the actors are also more or less ready. Next slide. So the shooting process uh, begins where the actors rehearse the script. So nowadays in, um, in a lot of films, the, the script and the dialogues and all that are given the previous day itself to the actor so that they can read and prepare themselves and come for the next day's scene. Uh, so uh, when the director takes the shot in as many takes as he wants to ensure that he's got what he wants. And uh, so nowadays we have, uh, we always record the sound also during shoot, but nowadays we also have sync sound uh, where a lot of films are shot with uh, live sound so that they can minimize the uh, po in the dubbing process in the post-production. So a scene may involve uh, background action or extras and this is normally taken care of by the AD. And uh, the next slide. Yeah. So when a take is over, the director calls for a cut and then this is when the camera and uh, sound stop uh, recording. So now typically after every shot, an AD is assigned uh, by the director and uh, an assistant DOP is assigned by the DOP to take technical notes on the kind of, uh, um, you know, uh, what has gone into that shot and, uh, you know, anything particular that they need to uh, think. The DOP department, I think, also will even um, look at, um, you know, what is the kind of exposure they've used on a shot and all that. It's very, de uh, like, uh, I just uh, finished a film with Mr. Madhu Ambat and I was amazed to see the the detailed uh, shoot report every day, the kind of detail that he, he puts out there is amazing. So if the director is satisfied, then the crew moves on from one scene to one, um, you know, shot to the other till the entire scene is finished. And uh, very often we find, uh, you know, on a 100 day shoot, maybe about 15 days, 20 days, we may do multiple locations on a single day. So that's when again, for us as uh, line producers or executive producers, the work becomes even, uh, you know, uh, harder and involves a lot more focus because we need to plan, uh, you know, wrapping at one place and moving to the next with minimal loss of time so that, uh, you know, we can get cranking at the next location as early as possible. So when, uh, once, once the shoot is over for a day, generally the director says pack up for the, for the day.
no after so pack up doesn't mean work is over so next slide yeah so after pack up the director will review the day's work and then he will also go through what they're going to do the next day and he has to uh, if he wants any changes he will inform at that time so that uh, the de various departments can prepare for the next day's shoot and then uh, if there are see normally we give the call sheets out uh, soon after lunch for the next day but if there are any changes to be made to the call sheet based on any particular requirement of the uh, director then those concerned departments are immediately informed so nowadays we also have a, a, a daily progress report uh, which uh, the direction department has to give us um, based this will typically tell you okay of the 120 scenes in a film we've shot 10 today 110 left what are the scenes shot is it fully shot partially shot so all these are important things that uh, matter in the daily report and then the camera report the sound report continuity report all that the various ad's or the various assistants of the heads of departments will be maintaining that for uh, you know the required amount of uh, time that the film is in place so um, uh, for us uh, typically end of the day there are payments to be made uh, there are some things which have to be settled daily some things which we do weekly and then of course uh, uh, on the for the major technicians and and crew it is against the milestones that have been set in their contracts but on a typical day uh, there are daily shooting expenses which need to be expended and uh, we do that on a day to day basis also the next slide please so uh, so the production department uh, from our side we need to plan the next day's transportation arrangements based on the schedule and call time because sometimes not every actor needs to be picked up in the morning some of them may have a late call so depending on that you need to inform the concerned drivers and and make sure that you know they don't uh, go uh, too early or they don't go too late so depending on that we need to make the arrangements our department will again coordinate with us uh, saying that okay director suddenly asked for something so i need money to buy this i need money to buy that so all that that's a daily process that goes on and uh, uh, you know that's uh, something that we are always prepared for because we know that in in the filmmaking process like i said the variables are very high so even though you've got uh, most things down in the schedule and the details that they've given you earlier nothing is actually written on stone uh, there will be changes uh, you know when we are shooting so we need to be prepared for that mentally and also financially because very often uh, last minute we'll have to cough up money to buy things that are required for the shoot so the again the costume department and everybody costumes is another thing also suddenly they may need to go run and buy something extra so you know you need to be prepared for that that kind of a thing the next slide please so in this entire process a very important department is the catering department so normally on a on a shoot we serve breakfast lunch evening snacks and dinner depending on how long we shoot for the entire cast and crew and um, if it's an outdoor shoot irrespective of how long you shoot we give uh, of course all the meals so we need to plan the catering and uh, of course there are uh, a number of uh, film catering companies that take care of things so we need to, we just need to ensure that it's uh, qualitative food that is that is being served uh, uh, then again again based on consumption nowadays we need to figure out whether you know you need to keep buying more hard disk so the dit will uh, typically tell you okay i mean you know i think we are kind of uh, getting to the full capacity of a hard disk so i think we need to buy more backup so uh, and stuff like that so that's also an ongoing process so the process continues till the entire film is scanned uh, so once again uh, next slide so once the entire film is scanned the director as i told you earlier will call a wrap and uh, when uh, once uh, that is done it is customary for uh, us uh, i think most of the time we do have a wrap party where it's it's a gesture of thanks uh, to all the cast and crew for having been part of that process 
um, it's a, it's finally time to celebrate that uh, you've actually finished the shoot on the film, but not yet the full film, of course. Um, so, and then the cast and the principal crew leave, and the production department, like I told you, we need to take care of settling the bills. And then uh, we are at this stage now ready to move on to the next slide, please, the post-production of the film. Uh, so, typically, this is uh, broadly what we do in uh, post-production, I mean, in production, and post-production, of course, from editing to, um, you know, uh, to uh, uh, dubbing, foley's, background score, all that is, uh, again, it's a part of the, the uh, post-production process, but it's still something that as a line producer we have to, uh, to follow. Uh, so I'll just quickly run you through that also and then we'll wind up. Can I, can I have the, yeah. So it's commencement of the editing process uh, where the editor will remove the NG shots and sequences the film in order. I'm sure you've just heard all this from uh, Srika Prasad what, what they do. Yeah, so I'm not going to waste too much time on that. Um, so the negative cut list is given and once they are, once basically the uh, editor has uh, lined it up, the director will sit with them and they will, uh, uh, you know, uh, finish the basic editing process, uh, after which it is sent for other post-production work like dubbing, the sound effects, background score and, and, and stuff like that. And once that, uh, can we have the next slide, the, the next one please? Yeah, so once the dubbing and background score is over, uh, once that is uh, once that is done, uh, the the it will go for the DI process, and then uh, at the end of the day, uh, once that is done, the entire film is kind of ready for uh, the DCP out, as they call it, the digital cinema process output is taken, and the film is actually ready for uh, publicity and uh, exhibition. So I've um, kind of broadly taken you through. Uh, the pre-production and the production process, which is what is crucial to what we do. Uh, so I think uh, with this, uh, we can uh, take questions if you have on, uh, on uh, any of these things that uh, I spoke about now. Thank you. Poduva, Thayaripa Abdinradu, Bigindha Risk Kulla Uru Thoyil Abdinno, Uru High Stake Gambling Abdinno, Uru Marsan Arikku. Adha Ningi Ebdi Pakarikya. I mean, it is, <laughs> the filmmaking, uh, I mean, as a producer, uh, you're the one who's uh, exposed to the most amount of risk. Um, you're putting your money out there without any guarantees that you will get it back. Um, end of the day, uh, a producer is putting a lot of trust into, uh, into people. So it's, he's actually investing in people and not just a product. So you trust your director, you trust your DOP, you trust your you know artists and everybody to give their best so that you will finally have a product that works in the market. So uh, I think in the entire filmmaking process, everybody gets their money and the producer is probably the only one who is not sure whether he's going to make all his money back. So it's definitely... a you know, a high risk uh, a thing that you're getting into. So how do you mitigate the risk? Um, that's something uh, that I said when you do the evaluation process, you will kind of understand how much you can mitigate. But end of the day, we have to accept the fact that it is a risky proposition and move on from there. I think it's basically the, the work culture has changed, costs have escalated, uh, so individuals who were big producers are not able to sustain like before. I think uh, the uh, taste of the audience has also changed and with social media and so much out there, uh, a film's fate is decided within a few hours of its release. Um, so uh, I think 
the holding capacity of an individual as a producer has come down. So, uh, and the studio model has been growing. So today you have the bigger players, the corporates coming in and, uh, you know, they are the, I think, going forward also it's going to be like that. So I think we all need to learn to accept that uh, um, the era of big producers is, uh, as individual producers is coming down. Though the, there are uh, very many of them still there. But most of them are moving also to a kind of uh, hybrid model where they work with corporates. That's a tricky question. <laughs> so, well, end of the day, or producer, we a product. I mean, that's our wish. But, uh, uh, so, I mean, you have a lot of people who are into cinema that is uh, not totally focused on, uh, on uh, you know, great financials, but they want to put a, put a good product out there or they want to tell a story. So, you have a combination of that, but as a producer, primarily you want to be safe uh, unless you have money to waste. So, I think uh, that would probably, uh, you know, weigh in more on a producer's mind. Uh, and uh, like I said earlier, Product nalla irunda na, namlu kanna panan tirpi varo. Another or nalla product also is needed. That's important. Or a tere pada tayari pula, tayari paruniya pangali purikilla. Adi yanda yanda vishethla mukhima amainu na ne keringi niya. Naangu work pandra model le, I am involved in everything. I don't sit in my office and run a production. I am there out there on location every day. I am involved with every department. So. Uh, I can only speak from my experience, but I, I feel that it's important and for me uh, as a producer, I, I kind of update my numbers every day. I want to know over a department line, what we have to do, what we have to do, what we have to do, what we have to do. I know on the laptop le daily update, I know where the film is going and I, am I likely to go overhead on, uh, over the budget on, uh, on various heads or am I saving money? That's an important thing for me. So, the more involved the producer is, I think it's better for the film. And the more amount of transparency there is, I think it's better for the whole team. That's what I feel. corporate <laughs> Actually, the assumption is not correct because the corporates are also very involved today in knowing the kind of content they are getting into. So, on the story, on the time, story, budget, work, at the same time, Saladala Vandu in the story Rumba Nalarga Nala Nanga Pandida Avanona, Kunja extra funds port Nanalum, they are prepared to do it. But uh, uh, it's an involved process. In the making on a day to day basis, the corporate may not be involved, but in selecting the kind of content they want, they are very much involved today. Is it healthy? I wouldn't say it's really healthy because, um, uh, like, I, like I said earlier, the fate of a film is decided within a few hours of the thing. Today, if you look at uh, cinema, uh, how much of a budget of a film is going into the making process and how much is going into paying actors and technicians? If you look at the ratio, uh, I think almost 50% of a cost of a film or sometimes even more than that. is in certain <laughs> cases more than that. Uh, yeah. So, uh, in the filmmaking process itself, how much money is going is also crucial. But more importantly, right now, uh, we are in a very fluid state. Um, theatre business is only picking up after COVID. And but cost of making a movie is not coming down. Um, obviously, cost of living is going up, so technicians and um, your light men and everybody need to be paid more. But uh, yeah, unless you have 
sufficient avenues of income coming in, I think it's very difficult to justify the kind of costs that are going into a film today. Your experience is not a good thing. You can see a lot of things. You can see a lot of things. Content is very important. For me, content has always been king. But uh, uh, the reality of our uh, uh, you know, uh, cinema going uh, public is also that they want to see the big stars out there. So stars drive the film to a large extent and the kind of business that it will generate. But today, good content is also doing well. So that's... Uh, a very good uh, thing for us. Just so, stick up. Uh, uh, budget. If you are able to limit your budget, or or careful, a number of under number waste, but now or a nice budget, or a padam murcha, nice content, or a padam, they doing well. So that's a encouraging sign. Inni ki cinema value de ganda platform la OTT or mukhyamana adathle irke. Idu cinema ko ande sadagama baadagama. Is it advantages or not? I think it, you need to look at it from different perspectives. From the perspective of the audience, it's fabulous. They're, they're getting much more <laughs> at uh, probably a much lesser cost. But for us in the industry, um, you know, end of the day, the theatre uh, revenues matter. But today, uh, you know, unless there are more OTT players, and that's happening, there are more players coming in now, and unless there is a healthy competition among them to get good content, as a producer, I may not get the kind of revenues that I want to get. So, OTT is important um, and that's the future. Uh, they are definitely going to be around. But if you ask me, are they going to replace theatre experience? I don't think so. Uh, I think they will have to learn to coexist. That's what we are looking at. <laughs> Cinema is very important. It's not a problem. At least, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. But, it's not a problem. 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 It's not a scientific. I think it's just logical that we all learn to... See, among producers, there shouldn't be a competition to... Um, I think one of the things that's been happening is that everybody wants the uh, dates of actors, so I'm willing to go to any extent to get the date of an actor. I'm not applying logic to uh, my assessment of what will work and what will not work. Um, therefore, uh, I am not looking at how to contain the cost of a film. So. Anda satu mindset le, nombor anda seri inda padat tak kipu laga nombor selalu panno, and if everybody has to be in agreement with that. So, I mean, to students, what I have to say is, as creative as you may be, finally your creativity has to be subject to a producer's ability to spend. And if he doesn't have that capacity to, to you know, take it to the canvas that you had dreamt of. Um, you might have to uh, rethink. I have I worked with directors who are able to, um, you know, they might have asked for something, but for some reason it was not working. They able to think of alternatives that will work in the number. But there are also a lot of people who are not capable of doing that or who don't want to do that. So I, that's where I think this transparency and a collaborative effort is uh, important in the filmmaking process. It's not just about, uh, uh, you know, every department being selfish. I think that's important. Palamurigilla, Palaparangla, and Yatar Sikinga. In the Parangalla, in the Paratari Anubungal, Ungulu Katut, and the Padamna, and our Tari Palara. You know, I have number fully involved there, you know, or AC office level producer and Sulu Kandate. Um, you know, if you let your film be run by somebody else, uh, you're not going to be able to control costs. So I think uh, it's uh, important for us to be there. Uh, you might be the bad guy on the set, but it's okay to be the bad guy because uh, somebody has to be the bad guy. So, uh, yeah. So I think uh, 
in the filmmaking process, I, I don't think anybody is really a uh, fully knowledgeable man. I learn on every film even now. There's, I come across situations which uh, I have not dealt with earlier. So it's a learning process and uh, I'm happy to learn all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, nobody is really an expert. Yeah. If successful producer, basic Well, to be successful, you need a lot of luck for one. But what can you do is also, uh, I think uh, it's, uh, you know, going about it systematically, having processes in place, having management information systems in place. Um, one would, uh, you know, normally say cinema is a chaotic process. But if you can bring some order into that chaos, um, then I think as a producer you need to be on top of the numbers, you need to be on top of the processes and uh, then you can be a successful producer. You also need to know, it's greed shouldn't drive your desire to be a producer. You should do what is good for a film, but you should also know when to say no or when to say not to waste money. I think that's important. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.